Today, we're gonna to be talking about business ideas. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, a podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show, subscribing on YouTube, giving us the thumbs up, hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any of these shows. Yesterday, we were talking about how to make money. We were talking about the secret formula. That's not really a secret, but how value is created. It's benefit minus cost. Value equals benefit minus cost. Today, we are going to be talking about demand and showing you some ideas or some ways. I'm not just going to give you a fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish. I'm going to show you some ways to come up with ideas on how to start a business or how to come up with ideas to start a business because I've seen a lot. I've been going through YouTube and looking at what people are searching for and one of them is business ideas. So I wanted to give you guys not just business ideas, but ways for you to come up with your own business ideas based on the fundamental principle of demand. We're going to get into what demand is and then I'm going to screen share and show you just some Google searches that I was doing on possible places that we can find demand and opportunities to have businesses or have business ideas. So we're going to get into that. First of all, we are part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put in HTBT in the memo field or the drop down, just like that says on this mug, you'll get this mug. Tons of other great benefits. We have a lot of great shows. If you have not heard of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network, go over to flfnetwork.com and check it out. We all have podcasts. We have content. We have you know, how-to videos, we have merchandise, and we have tons of other great stuff. We're going we're to have a conference next year. That's going to be really fun. We have G3 coming up in a week. That's going to be fun going to that concert. Tons of stuff. If you have any questions, comments, you want to reach out to me about business ideas, how to make money, anything else, you email me, matt at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. Unless you are one of those uh, Twitter people that have gone nuts on me today, <laughs> Oh man, if you follow me on Twitter, How to Build a Tent, you've seen the the nuts, the nuttiness that has gone on. You know you hit a sore spot when it just blows up on you. You know you hit something personal when people get all mad. And uh, boy, did I ever. Boy, did I ever. But that's neither here nor there. So I appreciate you guys sharing the show, subscribing, all that good stuff. I really, really do appreciate it. Also, I do appreciate, talked about a few, uh, few uh, episodes ago, how I really want to grow my YouTube channel. And I got a ton of you guys giving me advice, feedback, you know, just things I could do better, things I can try, different different things I can post. And that was just so helpful. I really appreciate it. Any like tips or corrections or things that I do that bug you, I would love to hear about it. I'm not one of those guys who thinks I have it all together, but I want to hear about it. I want to better myself. I always want to be improving just like I hope you guys are too and probably are because you're listening to this show. Okay, so let's just get right into it. The one thing I want us to understand when we're thinking about business ideas is demand because you need demand for your products or services or your business idea is crap. It's terrible. No matter how fun it is, no matter how passionate you are about it, no matter how much you believe in the product, if no one else cares about it, if no one else has a wants it or if there is no demand in the market, then it, you don't have a business idea. You have a hobby. You know, the IRS says that if you don't make money in the first two years, you have a hobby, you don't have a business. Uh, but I tell you, if you don't have sales, you don't have a business either. Even if you have, ton, you know, even if you, I don't know, have, what would you have if you don't have sales? You just have a company, you have assets, you have all this stuff. But if you don't have uh, sales, you don't have a business idea. So what demand is simply this. We've heard it before. If you ever take any college courses on economics, you know what it is, but it's very valuable to remember. Demand is the willingness and the ability to buy a product. The willingness and the ability. So that means two things. One, you have a product. Let's just say it's a Lamborghini. There's a lot of people that have the willingness to drive that car. I know a very few amount of people that would not want to drive a Lamborghini. But most people do not have the ability to purchase the car and therefore there is no demand or the demand is very low because a small amount of people have the ability. They have the willingness, but they don't have the ability. Vice versa. What was that one ugly car back in the day? It was like the Aztec, the, um, the 
I want to say Panasonic. That's not what it is. Oh, uh, whatever it was. There was this ugly SUV back in high school. It was, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. It doesn't matter who it is. But anyways, just imagine the ugliest car you could ever think of. And it's probably pretty cheap. Let's just imagine this ugly, cheap car. It's a, like a box. And we'll call it the Aztec because that's the name of the car. But for some reason, Pontiac. Pontiac Aztec. That's what it was. Just imagine that that car was really affordable. Anyone can afford it, but no one wanted it because it's ugly. No one wants to drive around an ugly car. I mean, some people will, but the other side is true then that you have a product that's affordable. People have the ability to buy it, but there's no willingness to buy it. And so you don't have demand there either. And so what you are trying to do in your business or in coming up with business ideas, brainstorming, thinking about what you have skills for, thinking about what you would enjoy doing, thinking about what you could do, like what is actually um, possible with your limited resources, and that is your finances, your time, you may have a big family. Like it would be pretty cool to have a SpaceX company, but I can't go personally go create a SpaceX company myself. One, I don't have the expertise. Two, I don't have the money and no one else is going to give me the money to go you know, th- shoot things up into outer space. Three, I don't have the time for it either. And four, I don't really have the desire. I was just making that up. But you see what I'm saying? All these things have to come together as well. And you need to be able to, once you do identify those things that you can do that are in your broad spectrum or possibility, you assess your skills, you assess how much money you're willing to spend, how much risk you're able to take on, how much time you're going to have, all of those different things. Then you need to start thinking about, well, where is the demand in the market? Where is there places where people have the willingness and the ability to buy something, a product or a service, and how can I deliver value and do it in a better way? And one of the things that you should think about also in this is thinking of yourself as your own little personal business, your body, your shell, who you are. A lot of times you think of yourself as an employee not as a business, but really an employee is a contractor, a subcontractor, no, let's, just say, let's just say contractor to be, you know, your company is contracting you for work. You have a contract with them. You have an employment contract and in exchange for goods or services you are providing to the company, they will give you a salary. It's really no different than another vendor that you would have. They are going to provide work under a contractual agreement and you're paying them money. And I want you to think about this Because then you're going to start seeing a bunch of different skills you have because you are employed because you have something valuable that a business wants to pay for. And this is where the business ideas come into play. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But first, we got to take a break and talk about our wonderful sponsor today, Faithful Counseling, faithfulcounseling.com slash HTBT. As a Christian, you know that God is always there for you, but sometimes things in this life can feel downright overwhelming. (laughs) That's the truth. And it could be beneficial to speak with somebody who shares your faith and values. They have licensed professionals in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, trauma, family conflicts, grief. I've talked to a lot of you guys who have had some of these issues that we've worked through together. And it's a great resource because you can access the 3,000 licensed therapists 24 hours a day, through four different ways, text, chat, phone, and video, 24 hours. And it's an an inexpensive, sometimes you might be able to qualify for financial aid. It's secure, convenient, professional, and affordable. And those are the times when you you have these depressed feelings, these overwhelming anxieties where you uh, don't even wanna get out of the house. You don't wanna even get out of bed. So this is a great way that you can just pick up your phone and access it. Best of all, it's truly affordable. How to Build a Tent listeners get 10% off your first, first month with a discount code HTBT. Get started today, faithcounseling.com slash HTBT, faithcounseling.com slash HTBT. Simply fill out a questionnaire, help them assess your needs, and get matched to a counselor you'll love. That's faithcounseling.com slash HTBT. All right, so you have these skills. You are employed. You have had employment before. Maybe you don't have a job and you're looking to just start your own business. And so you need to start assessing, why do these companies value you? And how can you, with your resources that you have, scale these things 
and create multiple streams of revenue or just not even be overwhelming about it? How do you create an extra source of revenue? What, where can you go? Where, what can you do to look for demand where people have the willingness and the ability to buy things that are in your wheelhouse? So how do you connect what you do, the skills you have, and how can you leverage that to pro- go to a place where there is demand that is, again, where there is value or where there is willingness and the ability to buy. And one of the things that you could simply do is start looking at jobs. And again, this is going to a mind shift of stop thinking about us as employees, but as businesses, we're contracting with a company to give us our skills and services. So one of the simple ways that you can do this, instead of thinking abstractly like, oh, I'm going to build a company that goes to outer space, or I'm going to build a supersonic jet. Like I'm going to build this app that everyone's going to download. Like for the majority of us, these things aren't going to happen, right? But there are businesses that we can do that are just common businesses. You can start a catering company. You can start a consulting company or you just, you're your own consultant. You can start typing, you know, translating languages. If you have, um, you know, you know more than one language. Like these are all small little businesses that if there's demand for, that could be really good. And they're low risk. They're proven. We see businesses needing translators. We see businesses needing food. Like this isn't some revolutionary thing. And you don't need to be revolutionary. That's the thing is you take your skills, you find a niche and you deliver and you differentiate yourself from your competitors. It's very simple. So one of the simple things that I did, and I'm going to throw this little pop up up and try a screen recording. All right, let's see how this goes. So I simply was just typing around easy jobs you can do from home. And this is another thing that'd be really great. And I highly recommend is, especially if your company has already done this, but talk to them about working from home. This is going to free up time. Just imagine cutting off the times on the end of your workday where you're commuting. And just instead of driving, to take those times and dedicate it to starting your business. That simple alone can give you an extra hour a day to do some of these things and to do research and to prepare and to start another business. Highly recommend that if you can do it. If not, can work at home. You can do things on your lunch break. You can take your 15 minute breaks that you have during your work day. You can work on weekends. I highly recommend taking a Sabbath though and just working one of the days of the weekend. You really need your rest. Don't burn out. But you can just simply type something like easy jobs you can do from home. Survey taker, patient experience specialist, voice over work. Actually, that's a little harder. But so those are some of the things. And then I wanted to Google the highest paying jobs in the US pay over $190,000 and it's not in tech. So I Googled what are the highest paying jobs in the United States? And the reason, the reason that I'm doing this is because I'm looking for demand. Remember, if they're, they're paying, if they're high paying jobs, that means there's demand there or there'd be low paying jobs. The higher demand, the more uh, money there's going to be flowing there. And so I was just looking through here and I'm seeing a lot of, you know, software developer. So you can go get some skills on developing software and become your own freelance developer. That's a business. Corporate controller. Maybe you can work as a consultant and get your um, CPA license and work for smaller businesses. Physician's assistant, software engineer, corporate counsel, um, software engineer. Again, the same thing. Inter- enterprise architect. I know people that have their own business doing that, consulting and helping people build new technologies, data warehouses, and all that stuff. Pharmacist, dentist. Now, these are like medical professions. And I'm not saying that you need to become a dentist or a pharmacist, but maybe there is opportunities for you to serve pharmacist and dentist. Maybe you can create a service where you'll deliver their drugs or you, and I don't know if this is legal or not, but I mean, these are the things you should start thinking about. Like, okay, so these people are making a lot of money. Can I create a business or service to make their lives easier? What if I created a network of dentists that will come or um, their dentist assistants? What if I created this package where you could go and clean people's teeth at work in the break room or, you know, I mean, that, that might be silly, but maybe at home. Like, you know, they have companies now where you can, you can get a massage at your house. Maybe it's with dentistry. Instead of having to go to a dentist's office to come get your teeth cleaned at home and your convenience of your own home, the comfort of your own home. I mean, you don't really have a lot of high end stuff 
And then if you need a doctor to review x-rays and all this stuff, you can go into the dentist office. But so these are the things you want to start thinking about. These salary, these these positions are in high demand. These people are making a lot of money. And so they definitely have the ability. And you better believe that a lot of these people are looking for convenience, easier ways to do their job. And maybe there's some ways that you can create some services or products for them that they would be willing to pay because you know they have the ability for it. Another one I did is just scrolling through, again, government data shows healthcare dominates the salary ladder. So looking for things to do in these, maybe it's sharpening tools, maybe it's providing you know, um, an app that will help people be able to you know, communicate with their patients more. I mean, there's tons of things you can do, but the point of this is, is you don't need to come up with some revolutionary, huge Tesla, SpaceX kind of thing, but just start looking at way, different jobs that businesses are employing people for, employing their company employees for, right? And see what you could do on your own on the side. I mean, there's easy, easy jobs you do online. Online juror. I've never even heard of that, but you can basically be a test juror for um, attorneys and they're testing out their arguments and stuff. Like, how cool would that be? That'd be kind of interesting. Data entry, website or application testing, search evaluator, proofreader, virtual assistant, work at home. So if you are on YouTube and you are one of these people I found this by saying business, like I'm trying to figure out business ideas. You don't have to be revolutionary. You have to align your skills with demand of the market and find a way to differentiate yourself from everybody else, either through quality, price, whatever it is, and just start branding and marketing yourself and going out and doing it, getting experience. There's great opportunities like Upwork where you can do freelance things where you can uh, you know, put out your resume, you can put out your company profile and get business that way. I mean, we are in an amazing time of technology. Let's take advantage of it. Not by thinking we have to do some glorious, like amazing you know, revolutionary thing. Train, you know, We're inventing the iPhone, inventing the iPad. We don't need to do that. We just need to find places to demand and find where our skills and our abilities, our assets can be aligned to provide value to these people where they'll want to hire us. And that's all you need to do to do a business. I mean, that's not all you need to do, but that's like, that's the the basis of coming up with a business idea and finding a market, a target audience, a niche, a niche for you to fit in. It's that simple. All right. So let's go out, be successful. We'll talk to you next time. God.